Now, look at 1 Corinthians chapter 14. We're going to talk about the second, last we talked about rest. Praying in, praying in other tongues or praying in the Spirit will give you rest. This is the rest wherewith ye shall cause the weary to rest. Amen? Hallelujah. But there's other things besides rest. Divine communication with the Father. I believe that it's important for the believer to be in divine communication with the Father. Can you say amen? amen. I believe that it's important for our spirits to commune with the Father of spirits. Amen. That being a Christian is more than following a list of rituals and liturgy and uh, following after certain precepts that the believer must be in divine communication with the Father of spirits. Now listen, I'm not demeaning or lessening the importance of the written word, of feeding on the word, of meditating, or you know that, of speaking the word, declaring the word, honoring the word, meditating the word, memorizing the word, living according to the word. And you know, but you know, the Bible says this, the letter killeth, but the spirit giveth life. Amen. So if all you do is if you're meditating or speaking and you're not communing with the author, amen. So we need to be in communion with the Father of Spirits. Why? So that all that he's written, all that he said has life to it. Amen. Amen. In our lives. And so it's important for the believer to be in divine communication with the Father of Spirits. So that the Bible doesn't become a, a, a book of do's and don'ts. It is the living, breathed, uh, living, breathed Word of God. Hallelujah. And it becomes that because you, when you commune with the Father, then His Word comes alive to you. Hallelujah. As Him speaking to you on a consistent and regular basis. Amen. Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians chapter 14 verse 1 says this, Follow after love and desire, again the word spiritual, and then gifts. Gifts is italicized. It's not in the original Greek. Uh, the original Greek actually says follow after and desire spirituals or better or easily translated things of and pertaining to the Holy Ghost. We ought to follow after things of and pertaining to the Holy Ghost. Amen. Remember Jesus said in John's, in, in John's gospel, he gets, he gets into the 14th to the 17th chapter and has that great time of ministry to the disciples uh, in preparation for his departure from the earth. And Jesus begins to say certain things. And one of the things he said, he said, I, he says, be, he said don't, don't be afraid, don't be, don't be worried, or don't, be com don't, don't uh, get uptight. I will send another comforter. I'll send another parakletos. Hallelujah. Another in the Greek meaning and one after the same manner as myself. Oh, praise God. I'll not leave you comfortless. I'll not leave you without a helper. I'll not leave you without a standby. I'll not leave you without an intercessor. I'll not leave you without an advocate. I'll not leave you without a teacher. Glory to God. But I'm going to send one after the same manner as myself. Glory to God. Jesus told the disciples that there was one coming who would minister life to them, who would, be their, who would be their friend in their darkest hour, who would be their advocate at the court of justice, praise God, who would intercede for them when they were lost and gone astray, hallelujah, who would open up and reveal the word of God to them in a way that they could understand it, praise God. Are you here with me, praise God, who would be their comfort in the hour of sorrow, glory to God. He said, I'm sitting one just like me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The great and mighty Paracletos. Hallelujah. Glory to God. John in his, his epistle to the church says greater is he in the, first, the fourth chapter. I believe it's 1 John 4, 4. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Oh, Hallelujah. I'm telling you, church, I'm telling you that there is one on the inside. Glory to God who's come to make an abode in you. Praise God. Glory to God that when the hour of trial or trouble or tribulation arises, he'll arise up as the greater one. Hallelujah. And put you in divine connection with the Father of spirits. Glory to God. God himself. Hallelujah. And cause you to overcome and to win. 
<laughs> Praise God. So stop leaning to the arm of the flesh. Start leaning to your, stop leaning to your ability. Stop leaning to your understanding. Stop leaning to your program, the man way, the, the whatever way, and lean to the greater one on the inside. Praise God. He says, he that, no, the second verse 2 says, He that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh what? <laughs> Not unto men, but unto God. For no man understandeth him, how be it in the Spirit, and we found out from this chapter already, he speaketh mysteries. The word mysteries in the Greek means divine secrets. Oh, my, 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 my. So you can get to praying things out in the Spirit, and you begin to get revelation of what you're praying, but it's a secret between you and God. You see, God has spoken to us about three weeks ago in prayer about something. Now, the church doesn't know what it is. Now, some of you think you know what it is. You might know what it is. I'm not going to tell you if you know what it is. But there's, a, there's something that God has for us to do as a church in the near future that we've been thinking about for five years. I'd, I'd be in James. sitting around and say, well, something ought to be done about such and such. Yeah, I know. There was, no, there was nothing in our spirits about it. Just kind of the thought would come. We got to praying. In here on a Sunday night, and I'm sitting here, and all of a sudden, boom! It hits me, like, I mean, drops on me. We're going to have to do it. I'm not, listen, I'm, I'm waiting on direction. I know we're going to do it. I don't know how yet. <coughs> As a church, we're not shutting down, leaving, moving. I'm not going to Mexico or anything like that. I'm not, I'm not packing up and starting a traveling ministry. But I'm telling you, we as a church have something to do. We finished prayer. Now, Janie had, had, had gone back in my office uh, and, 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 and was sitting in there with a speaker on praying in there. And um, so I come in the office. She said, did you get such and such while you were praying? <laughs> now, I'll be honest with you. We've ne I've never, in, our, in, in all our time in ministry, we've never had that, something that strong come out that way. I said, yeah. She said, I got the same thing. I thought, well, I don't have to convince the wife. <laughs> you know, sometimes as a pastor, you've got you to go to your wife and say, well, you know, I believe the Lord's leading me this way. And, and if God hadn't spoken to them at that point in time, you're kind of like, well, well, do you think that's going to work? Or, you know, and that's, that's fine. That's, that's part of the marriage relationship and, 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 and counsel and bouncing things back and forth. But, you know, this, I don't have to convince the wife. He told her too. Yeah. That's a shortcut. Hallelujah. Now, God may have already spoke to some of y'all. Don't go telling anybody. Why? Because, see, th certain things don't need to be revealed until certain times. Amen. So there's a fullness of time. Yes. How do you get to understand the fullness of time? Divine communication in the Spirit. Yes. He that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto man but unto God. How be it in the Spirit, he speaketh mysteries. You can commune with the Father. Oh, my, 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 my. Mysteries in the Spirit. <laughs> oh, glory to God. I said glory to God. And heaven's aware. You're aware. The head of the church is aware. But the devil is dumbfounded. He can't get involved. Because he don't understand the things you say in the Spirit. Oh, glory to God. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. Thank God for the ability to commune with Him spirit to spirit. Amen. I said amen. amen. I know some things are going to happen in, the, in, the, in these next months concerning this particular event that's going to revolutionize our church ministry. I know. There's something there that's supernatural. I just got a phone call last week from Larry Patton, the uh, station manager over at WLXI. I haven't talked to Larry in years. Just hadn't been, I hadn't been involved in the television thing. I just, you know, just, uh, you know, just kind of wasn't my thing, and I didn't really like some of the things that were happening back a few years ago. And I just got, un I just got uninvolved with it. Well, they want me to come in just for a minute. Don't want me to be on the telephone, be eye candy on the platform, and hope you'll call in and pilot. They want to do an interview with me about, about our church and ministry. And he just, he said, you know, you still where you are? I said, yeah, I'm still over there. He said, well, how, I want you to come in and do, do it. Let's do an interview. On Thursday, so I go in Thursday, we film it, and they tape it, or they show it on Friday and Saturday. I believe God's got something he wants to touch. I'm not pushing the door. See, you don't have to push doors. God opens doors that no man can close and closes, no door, closes doors no man can open. There are things done by the Spirit that no man can stop. Amen. There are things done in the Spirit that, that are eternal 
and will last forever. Are you here? You're going home. The things of the Spirit. See, how are you going to know if the things of the Spirit are not? You are in divine communication with God. I mean, remember Dad Hagen. I mean, we thought Dad Hagen had this awesome ministry, <coughs> huge ministry. We used to have camp meeting, 20,000 people coming, glory to God. Built Rhema Bible Training Center, Rhema Bible Church. I mean, you know, um, over, uh, I think at one time in the 90s, Dad said they had printed 4 million books. And that was in the 90s. I, I, I know it's well over that now. Might be well over 10, 20 million. I don't know. But a bunch of and all over the world. Because the Lord told him that radio and the, at the time in his ministry, radio and the written word books was the best way to reach people. Well, books get where nothing else can get. It's amazing where books can get. It's amazing how books can show up in the Soviet Union, those former Soviet Union. It's amazing how books can show up in China. Hello? Some little, some little book show up somewhere, and somebody read it, and revelations start to flow to them. Did you know Dad Hagen did not hit the, the zenith of his ministry until the last 30 years? Hello? He was, re he was relatively unknown, except in a small Pentecostal circles, mm -hmm. until, uh, really, until about the, the, the 70s. Early 70s is when he really started hitting the stride. And then <coughs> camp meeting started out in Sheridan Road Assembly there. They said 800 people. They didn't start camp meeting until sometime early 72, 73, something like that. Early 70s is when they started their, their well, indoor camp meeting in Sheridan Road Assembly. And after, I think after two years or three years, they had to move downtown Tulsa. And by the time I went in 1980 for the first time, they, had, they were having 18 to 20,000 people register. Hmm. Eight years. But he'd been in the ministry at that time for 40 years when he, these things started. Yeah, right. He preached in churches of, of 500, 600, 700, you know. But, I mean, what to, the, the, to, to be well-known like Oral Roberts or Branham or A.A. A. Allen, Jack Coe. Um, whoo, uh, Captain Kuhlman, I, I, had to, I had to act it out for a second. <laughs> Hallelujah. The glory is he. Okay. Hallelujah. Praise God. Well, she had a gift. Praise God. Amen. People got healed. People got ministered to. The supernatural power of God flowed. Amen. Oh, yeah. She was a little weird looking. Well, who cares? You get healed. Who, who cares how long her sleeves are if you get healed? I don't care. There, if there's a train four miles long and you got 45 little, you know, dwarves holding them up. I don't care as long as you get healed. Amen. What am I trying to say? See, when the fullness, see, things, things, certain things in the spirit are a matter of time with God. And you can look around you in your life and your walk and what's going on in your personal life and compare it to somebody else. And I'm telling you, it's not smart to get to think about that. You just need to stay in communication with the Father. You need to stay in communion with the Father. Because things come in their fullness of time. Amen. Things happen in your life when it's the right time. There's things that just happen that have to happen in the right time. Yep. There are some, I remember. See, I'll tell you something. If you'll pray in the Spirit and stay in the Spirit and, and commune with God, hallelujah. You need to be, I'm going to tell you, look, look at me. Everyone, you look at me. I'm looking at you. Look at me. Look at me. You need to spend more time praying in tongues. Mm -hmm. You don't pray in tongues enough. Yeah. Blah, 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 blah. You're like a, don't sound like a motorboat. Just say, okay. Yeah. Why? Because you need more communion with the Father for these days. You need to be in co more communion, more contact with the Father, spirit to spirit in these days and these hours. Okay? Yeah. But there are, there, are, there are things in timing with God that some things, God, you, it's in your heart, you know it's in your heart, you want to do. If you go do it in the flesh, it'll bomb. Yeah. But if you'll commune with God and walk with God, and leave it in God's hands, although it's in your heart. And maybe sometimes you have to put it on the back shelf and let it sit there for a while. Amen. I said amen. Yeah. But when it's the right time. God will open the door and you'll walk in it. As long as you stay faithful. Let us not be weary in well-doing. For we shall reap in what? Didn't say in a week. Didn't say in a month. 
didn't say in a year, five years, ten years, or whatever. It said in due season. See, spiritual things are not necessarily in the same type of timetable as natural things. In other words, you know, if you plant green beans, and book back of the thing says it'll sprout in two weeks. Okay. So in two weeks, what are you doing? You're looking for that little green thing coming up out of the ground. Hello? You know, maybe, maybe squash sprouts in, in 11 days. What are you doing? You're looking for that little thing shooting up out of the ground in 11 days. Spiritual things, we have to, that's why we have to learn the ways of the Spirit. That's why we have to be in communication with the Father. That's why we have to be in tune with Him. Because there are certain spiritual things that, in, that God has in a timing that our human reasoning doesn't understand. And there's not something on the back of the package that says it's going to show up in five months. No, on the back of the package it says you're going to do this, you plant this, you welcome this, and then you live by faith and not by sight. Amen. And you will have. How long is that? As long as it takes. Hello. I said as long as it takes. Oh my. <clears throat> well, I don't like that, Pastor Ed. I want a timetable. See, that's walking by, fa that's walking by sight and not by faith. You won't be able to go, okay, I gave $10 in the offering, and when I get home tomorrow in my mailbox, it's going to be $1,000. Glory to God. Hallelujah. <laughs> dummy. Uh -huh. <laughs> Anybody that teaches that's a dummy. We're misteaching people. We are to sow and to water. What did he say? One man soweth, another man watereth, but God giveth the increase. Amen. What timetable is that in? God's. That's right. Why? Because <coughs> there are certain things that can be do only done in the, listen, his word had been given 1,500 years before Jesus came, but he can only come in the fullness of of time. Yep. That's why communing with the Father is so important because He keeps you steady, keeps you on track, keeps you from getting antsy about something not happening in a certain time. Table. And you going out and doing it in the flesh, Abraham. Yeah. 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 Hello! Are you here? You're going home. You see, when you get antsy, you get Ishmael. Who wants an Ishmael? Raise your hand. Didn't think so. If you did, put it back down. We'll pray for you. You want Isaacs. Isn't that right? Man, just think about if Abraham had gotten an antsy and had an Ishmael. We wouldn't have, well, one thing, we wouldn't have sermon material. A lot of sermon material there. Second, the Middle East would be a different looking place. It certainly would. It would be a whole different situation over there. But if you're not antsy nights in the tent with Hagar, with the blessings of the wife. Mm. <laughs> now let me say this, just because your wife blesses it don't mean it's God. That's right. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> come, here. Come, here. come here. Come here. Just come here. Okay. <laughs> Sit right there. <laughs> well, I'm saving your ribs. Okay. <laughs> 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 Haven't you learned anything yet? <laughs> She's got a good sense of humor. She's got a, yeah, but I, I, they still got pointy, they got pointy elbows, man. Wham! Yeah, mine are still. I, I had. I mean, I had to. Oh, anyway, anyway. <laughs> that one service, Brother Hagen, one time walking in love. I got, I got punched all up, bruised, and. <laughs> My wife poked me every time I, you, what you going to do? What you, honey, can you stop elbowing me? <laughs> she, where was I? <clears throat> Abraham and Ishmael. I mean, that's why being in communication with the Father, staying in communion with Him when God has things in your heart. Yeah. And you can't figure out why they haven't happened yet. 
Oh, I, I'm so, I don't understand it. So-and-so has done this, and they've done that, and they've got this many people. They've they're, they're, they got this many houses. They've got this kind of job. They're driving this kind of car. I'm driving this old rattle piece, uh, rattle trap piece of junk held together with bailing wire. I mean, the cops stopped me last week and wanted to know, you know, did I have termites? <laughs> My pastor came down from Cleveland, Ohio, and you know, they stopped the roads real bad, and he had a 1970, oh, let me think now, about a 74. Um, it, was, it, was either, it was either the Impala or the Bonneville or whatever. You remember, the, remember they kind of went to that different kind of body style? Something in that kind of class, car from GM, a Chevy something, a, a Pontiac or a Buick. You know, there's three cars that were... Um, they were all, you had the half land out roof on the back and the, that whole body style. You know, I remember that. But the salt had rusted out the tire wells all around the car. And the Winterville, North Carolina police, population 3,237, one caution light, salute, hallelujah, pulled him over and wanted to know if he had termites in his car. <laughs> Because it was eat all slam. Faith preacher, <laughs> preaching the authority of the believer, and you can have what you say and believe God. Gets pulled by the cops over a termite car. And then people put, in this, put a dead snake in his mailbox. Sister Debbie went out to get mail and there was a dead snake in it one day because they were a cult. We were a cult. What do you call that? Redneck. <laughs> I mean, you know, Pitt County was the world's largest producer of flu cure tobacco at one time. Yes, sir. Everybody's nickname was Bubba. What was your last name? Bubba. Bubba Bubba. I mean, even the black folks had a Confederate flag in the back window. <laughs> I'm just messing. <laughs> Praise God. That was a good one on it. That was a good one on it. Yes. <laughs> hey, so redneck down there, man. I'm telling you. Anyway. <laughs> Jerry said, my, my, my. Help him, Jesus. Hallelujah. You gotta admit that was good. That was good. All right, put the camera there. All take all thumbs up and put it on. Put, I said, put the camera. Yeah, was that good? That's good. You ain't going to pick out it. Oh, hallelujah! It's changed. Hallelujah! They even have a. They even have a, what? A, White girls working in the kitchen and black guys working in the front Ooh. at Parker's. Hallelujah. Ooh. Can you put that out there? Because <laughs> they, 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 they fraternized anyway. Hallelujah. All right. But yeah, that was all because of his car. <laughs> Faith preacher car. All right. Dead snake in the mailbox, rednecks. All right. Praise God. Aren't you glad we've been delivered from rednecks? Yeah. And, and all the kind of mess. Hallelujah. We, are we going to be able to put this on the internet? <laughs> run last week's. Yeah, run last week's twice. Hallelujah. That's all because Greg got in trouble. That's why he don't want it on there. <laughs> man, I'm telling you, that man got a lot of spiritual stuff out in just a short period of time. Hallelujah. <laughs> this divine communication keeps us steady. Yeah. There's things in your heart. God showed you things. Some of you is years ago, and, you, and, you, and I'm going to tell you, you can get antsy about it. You can sit there and get frustrated because it's not happening. Let me say this. If you're walking with God with your heart, you're communing with the Father, you're doing what He's telling you to do, and things had not happened yet, it's not the fullness of time. Don't worry about it. Don't go to some stupid seminar where somebody tells you, step out and do it anyway. If you're not being led to do something, you got people who go to church growth seminars all the time and copy somebody else. And they may come back and actually get growth and they miss God. <clears throat> there are things that we can do in any, in any business model, whatever, to grow. Church models, you can get people. But if it's not what God has for you, if it's not your assignment, 
and you're copying someone else and you're following their plan and you're, you know, I mean, that's, we always glean wisdom from stuff. I understand that. Stop preaching faith, you know, and, and water it down and, you know, people will come. That's not my assignment. I don't care what your assignment is. My assignment is this. Mm -hmm. I'm going to stay with my assignment. Yeah. I'm going to do what God told me to do. I care. I don't care. Well, you don't have as many people, so and so. And since when do we measure? Listen, I can, I can show you cults that are bigger than, than the whole denominations. Oh, yeah. Right here in the earth, on the planet, in America, we have pseudo Christian cults that are bigger than good, strong mainline denominations. Oh, yeah. That means they're doing the will of God. We know that they don't even preach Jesus right. Him and Satan are brothers. Hello? But everybody thinks they're just wonderful, they live a clean lifestyle. It's appealing. It appeals what? It appeals to a fleshly mindset. When you're doing what God said to do, I mean, I, I've said this before, but let me, I, I, and I say it when I minister to some of my ministers in, in, uh, <clears throat> in my district. If you're doing what God told you to do, if you're doing it the way God told you to do it, and you're doing it where God told you to do it, then you're successful. Amen. It doesn't matter how many people are there. No matter if you've got 20,000 or 300 or, two, or 20. If you're doing those three things, then it is up to God to do the other part. Right. Just like if you believe you receive when you pray, it's up to God for the delivery. He said, you, if you, what things ever you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them and ye shall have them. My part is to believe they receive when I pray. Yeah. I can't go out and make shall have come to pass. That's God's end. I said, that's God's end. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I remember when I first got saved, um, a good Pentecostal boy. You know, I grew up Pentecostal holiness. Um, probably was saved as a kid but never walked in. You understand that? But then, then 1979, on July 11th, 1979, I went to the altar. I committed my heart to Jesus Christ. Four days later, I went down there, got baptized with the Holy Ghost, speaking in tongues. Hallelujah. I mean, I got so drunk on the Holy Ghost, I couldn't even stand up. I didn't know what being drunk on the Holy Ghost was. Had no idea what it was. Man, I, I got baptized in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. A week later, um, well, actually, on July 11th, 1979, I believe it was a Wednesday night. The following Sunday night, I got baptized in the Holy Ghost. The following Wednesday night, July 18th, 1979, Janie came to church with me. Or actually, she didn't come to church with me. We had a big fight because we were broke up. We, we were kind of broke up, semi-broke up, you know, kind of thing. I was, it was unmasculine for a guy to be a Christian. That's what she told me. Because all she had were these little mama boy Christians in her family. Y'all know what I mean? Now, back then, it was, it was, it was the tire treads around the ears. Well. And you understand the time. You know, back then, you, know, you wore longer hair. 70, uh, 79 was longer hair, you know, kind of a, the uh, dry natural look, you know, instead of some buzz mama boy talking like a girl. Ooh. Yes, ma'am. Okay. okay. Yeah. And all she knew about boy Christians was they were unmasculine. Now, I was a jock. I lifted weights, I benched 360, I deadlifted 400, I squatted 400, I beat lockers in with my head. I was crazy. I, was, I mean, I was a jock, I was, I was just a jock, you know? I mean, just, just man, manly man. <laughs> and if you didn't think I was a manly man, I'd hurt you and show you I was a manly man. Just, just the way I was, you know? I get saved. She thinks I'm going to turn into a weenie. <laughs> And not an Oscar Mayer, probably the low, the low store brand. <laughs> you know? And so she looked at me when I told her I got saved, and she went, do you know how unmasculine it is for a guy to be a Christian? Boy, I mean, went for the jugular, right? Because I was, I was really into him. I was really into the, you know, the, I mean, I'd, stand, I'd lift and I'd stand in front of the mirror and I'd do the whole thing, you know? And I had pretty big guns, big shoulders, and, you know? I mean, yeah, I, 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 I contracted Dunlap at one time. <laughs> Chester drawer disease also. Chest then fell into your drawers. Oh, praise God. And then lapped over your belt. Hallelujah. I got, I've been through all that. Hallelujah. You can laugh about it. I know some of you go, how could he ever been that big? Well, I was, I was big. I was big. Shape. I didn't have any fat. I mean, I was chiseled. Praise God. So she said, unmasculine. Went for the jugular. 
But I didn't care. I started turning on little Jesus. Oh, well, whatever you say. Praise the Lord. Then I went and got filled with the Holy Ghost. Came out and told her I got filled with the Holy Ghost, spoken in tongues. And she went, oh. Because she, if she did go to church, it was with the frozen chosen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. And the only Pentecostal people she'd ever had contact with was the UPC church a block and a half down the road. <laughs> You understand, at that time, the UPC church was really beehive hairdos, the dress. And if you didn't get baptized in the name of Jesus only, and if you didn't speak in tongues, you weren't going to heaven. And they stopped by their house and knocked on the door and witnessed to them and tell them that they weren't set baptized in Jesus' name, they weren't baptized in the Holy Ghost, they weren't going to heaven. With their beehive hairdos. <laughs> and the dust powder all over them, you know. Pentecostal women used to wear that white, couldn't wear makeup, so they take that white body dusting powder and put it on their face. I mean, you look like they were putting them in the casket. <laughs> that white dusting powder, I mean, took all the color out. Oh, my. Well, that, so this is there. I get to the, so Jamie comes, she gets saved. She gets baptized in the Holy Ghost, sings four songs in four different languages on that following Wednesday on the, on the 18th. Praise the Lord. Within 30 days of me getting saved, and you know, we're, we're just going to church all the time, we're saying, God speaks to me and says, you're going to the Orient to preach. Man, I am looking for airline tickets the next day. Are y'all here? I mean, you know what I'm talking about? So real and so strong and so powerful. I know, man, I'm going to preach Jesus to the Orient at some point. You know, and I don't think at some point in time, I'm thinking next month. I am out of here. I mean, I am cutting beef for boogie and splitting. Praise God. I'm making like a tree and, and, and leaving. Amen. Now they're old corny ones, all right? They're really, Andrea, laugh. <laughs> you knew you wanted to. I mean, it's just so corny, you got to laugh. Hallelujah. A year goes by, I end up at Ramah. Yeah. I almost ended up at Holmes College of the Bible in Greenwood, South Carolina, you know, which was the Pentecostal Holiness Spiritual School. <laughs> so we had Evangel, which was our, where all the bad kids went. It's a liberal arts college, and the, and the kids who were rebellious went down to Evangel. The kids who were serious about God went to Holmes, where you couldn't touch the girl's hands or anything. You couldn't talk to them. You could sit at lunch with a girl, but you had to sit on opposite sides of the table so they would touch knees under the table. They sat in the classroom on separate sides of the classroom because they didn't want any fraternization. Honey, I'm going to tell you something. Young folk are going to fraternize if you, if, unless you teach them how to live in the Spirit. Yeah. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with somebody dating. My God. If you see a pretty, I mean, listen, it's better to, to find out if you like them before you marry them. Yeah. Are you here? I mean, I told, I told one of my kids one time, I said, you know, it's better for you to find out before you get married than to come visit me in prison. <laughs> Y'all get that? Because <laughs> if they treat you bad after you get married, uh, shovel in the back 40. <laughs> and I'm half serious. Anyway, if you're listening, you think about dating my daughters. I will hurt you. What if they're bigger than you? I know people that'll hurt them. <laughs> My brother's already called me one time and said, you want me to show up with the truck and the shovels? <laughs> Hallelujah. See, I ended up at Rama. Heard the names Mark Brzee and Doug Jones. That's, and I never met, you know, I didn't meet them. I didn't, they were already, they were doing something. But I heard the names mentioned from Brother Hagin in the pulpit and stuff. Left Raymond, came out to Greenville, North Carolina, worked in a church for five years, ended up in Greensboro, connected with Buddy Harrison, ended up here pastoring. God told me in 89, go back to your roots. I went back and was ordained with Raymond in, uh, I believe, um, February of 1989. And uh, this, the, uh, that was right after, in um, the fall of 88, spring of 88, the Lord spoke to us. Somebody, about this. somebody said, look, I, I got Mark Brzee coming up here. He wants to do a couple of churches. We only want him for Sunday. You want to have him for the Monday through Wednesday? I said, sure, we'll have him. <clears throat> a divine connection was made. Two years later, three years later, he came to me and said, we're going to Europe to have Bible schools. I want you to come preach over there. I said, praise God, I'll go. And then you have to, that's another story, but the Lord already spoke to me the day before. He said, you'll travel in Europe with him. And uh, we ended up, and so when he asked me, I didn't have to pray about it. I already had the answer. God spoke to me ahead of time. Don't you love when God tells you, I mean, just right before something happens, you already got the answer. Yes. Now, my response to when God said I would travel in Europe like that was, get behind me Satan. Who do you think you are? That's Mark Brzee. You're Ed Taylor. You know, you're nobody. 
next day, stop me and ask me. I thought, well, I, God, God knows what he's doing. <coughs> Four years later, they were on a plane flying somewhere, and the Lord said, what worked work in Europe, work in Asia. Saw it in his newsletter, and, then, and the God said, there's your answer. Here's how you're going to Europe. Here's how you're going to Asia to preach. I stepped off the plane in, in 1999 on the tarmac in Bangkok, Thailand, to go preach for a week in a Bible school to Bible school students 20 years after God said, you'll go to the Orient. 20 years. Not 20 days, not 20 months, 20 years. That's a long time. What did you do wrong? Nothing. Things had to be set in order. There were certain things that had to happen for the fullness of time to come. But communing with the Father all through that time <coughs> and walking with God. God was setting things in order and establishing things all along the way to get it ready for that day. And let me say something. When Ab think about Abraham. He got antsy after 13 years, or 12 years, at 87, Ishmael. But it was 25 years after he appeared, after God appeared to him. Yeah. And said, I make my covenant with me and thee, and your sand be as sand of the seashore and the stars of the heaven. When he was 70 and 5 years old, God spoke to him. When he was 100, Isaac was born. Certain things had to happen. For certain, sometimes it's certain, there, there are reasons. God wants it to be so that it's so supernatural nobody can take credit. See, when, 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 Abraham, when God first appeared to Abraham, he was 75. Sarah was 65. You could say, well, it's possible she could get pregnant at 65. Not likely, but possible. At 90, she's pruning womb Sarah. I mean, it's dried up, baby. I mean, she's like the California raisins. <laughs> Y'all hear you gone home. I said, y'all hear you go home. That womb ain't having no baby. You can't artificially inseminate it. I mean, she's singing, I heard it through the grapevine. Hallelujah. Sing and leave. I remember the California raisins. I miss those commercials, man. Those are cool commercials. You know, I heard it through the grapevine. Hallelujah. Anyway. <laughs> Abraham took, but see what? When he got, out of, he got out of communicating with God, he got into the flesh. And Ishmael was born. God waits another 13, 12 years and shows up when he's 99 and said, you're going to have a child, and it's going to be the seed. He said, oh, the Ishmaelite might live before thee. He said, you know, Ishmael, I'm going to paraphrase a little bit of the story here. I heard you. I'm going to bless Ishmael, but he's not the promise. The seed won't come through a bondwoman. It'll come through your wife, Sarah. It's the seed of promise. It was so supernatural. Hey, Abraham went down to the town gate every day and said, my name's no longer Abram, it's Abraham, the father of many nations. You got the thing that the young whippersnappers thought he was crazy. I don't care what young whippersnappers think. They think they know everything. Hello. They might have a lot of zeal, but they're stupid sometimes. Let's face it. They are, they're, they're in Bible schools thinking they know more than instructors. God did not send you there to know more your instructor. I remember my roommate, roommate story. Ran my roommate story. One of my roommates told us that when we're on our way out there, he said, tell you what, I'll be teaching at Raymond before the end of the year. Yeah, he was, he was so advanced. He would be teaching at the school. God had showed him. Wow. And I was young and dumb. I thought, wow. He never did. Never has. Not in the ministry today. Stay teachable. Yeah. I said stay teachable. Stay submitted to God. Stay teachable. Don't think you know everything. You don't know everything. I don't know everything. I know a lot more than some people know, but I don't know everything. Yeah. Hello? Yeah. Do you know it was 31 years after I graduated from Rama? Before I ever taught there, past February I taught, 31 years, God opened the door. I shared with young Bible school students. Some of those guys think they know, and I put up, I put up on the board because I knew, I knew some things that were going on. The God had me, I put some un, undeniable truths, number one. Ed Taylor's undeniable truths, number one, you don't know everything. That applies to Bible school students and church members. 
Undeniable truth number two, you don't know more than your instructors. Yeah. Undeniable number truth number three, stay submitted. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that was enough. Those are three undeniable truths that keep you out of trouble. That's a lot, right? Yeah. Amen. Amen. Stay in communion with God. There are things that God put in your heart. He put them there. You may, you may have got to think of that God's never going to do that. Don't, don't. Just, just put it in the place of prayer. Put it into the divine communication tube. And let it sit there. And let God, let God breathe on it. And let God work it. Amen? Let God work out those things. There's things he placed in our heart a few weeks ago in prayer. I, we, we're, I'm, I'm kind of like, what do I do next, Lord? I'm, I'm, I'm having to pray because I don't know what to do next. I know what we're, supposed, we're going to do. I don't know how to do it. So what do you go? I'm going to pour out to pray it. Well, if you tell us we can pray more effectively, no, you'll pray in the flesh. Yeah. You pray in the Spirit, then, then you can't mess it up. Yeah. Hello. Uh, people come, people, some people come at one time, a lady come up to me, from, uh, no kin to anybody in our church, or anybody that's been in our church, come up to me and start telling me that God has showed her this about me and this about me, all these things about me and my personality and all this stuff. She's, and I'm like, oh, brother. You know, can we have Rod Serling in the background, please? Do -do 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 -do. Just pray in the Spirit and let God do what God does. Yep. If we get in divine communication, we get in divine communication, the Spirit of God will lead and guide us as a whole. Mm -hmm. and, we'll, and we'll get up and one day I'll say, here's what we're going to do. And you'll go, yeah, I knew it all along. Well, praise God you did. Because you were in divine communication. I won't have to convince you. I won't have to say, oh, this is what you need to do. And you go, oh, oh, oh I don't know if that's going to work or not. We're going to know what God has for us to do because we're praying it out in the Spirit. Amen. Thank you.